Welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Tina and I make videos on lifestyle, home, and DIY projects every single week. For today's video, I am DIYing some projects that you guys DM'd me on Instagram. I made an Instagram story asking for some of your DIY ideas and you guys sent me some really awesome suggestions. I'm really pleased with how both of these projects came out. I think that they look pretty professional and really close to the original. I also included a few tips and tricks in here so you guys can recreate them and make them look amazing. Before we jump into that, I also want to mention that we do have a giveaway at the end of this video. We reached 75,000 subscribers on this channel and I am I'm literally in awe. I made a little post on my community tab, but I just want to thank you guys so much for supporting this channel. It's been an incredible year. If you guys don't already know, I actually started this channel about 10 years ago, and it was always my dream to have a YouTube channel to just share things that I loved. So I'm really happy that I came back about a year ago and just stuck with my channel. I'm so proud of all the videos and the projects that I'm able to share with you guys, and I am just so incredibly thankful for your support in this whole journey. So to show my gratitude, I wanted to do a giveaway so make sure that you stay till the end so that you can participate. All right, let's jump into the first project. So this one actually came from a couple of people. I've been seeing these knots all over Instagram. These knots are very aesthetically pleasing and I believe the original is by an artist named Virginia Sin. You've probably seen some of her work on Urban Outfitters or West Elm. They just have such amazing ceramic pieces. So I'm really glad to show you guys how you can recreate a similar piece. And I also show you guys a really great hack when you're working with polymer clay. So without further ado, let's jump into the first project. <music> Hello from VoiceOver Tina. For this first project, I'm using polymer clay by the brand Sculpey, and it's just their original polymer clay, which I found to work pretty perfectly for all the DIY projects I've done so far on my channel. The first thing I do with any polymer clay project is to knead the clay to soften it up. This is a leftover piece of clay, so it wasn't too hard, but when you first open up a new package of clay, you may find it to be super hard and crumbly, so it takes some time to really work the clay and make it more malleable. You could also mix up a colored clay at this step, but I'm just going to keep it white for this project. Now we're going to create a nice even coil, and I'm just using the palm of my hands to roll the clay back and forth, working from the middle and moving my hands outwards. Making the coil an even width throughout is crucial to perfect the look of this project, so I really took my time with this part. It actually probably took me around 10 minutes to roll this out, and this DIY looks simple, but honestly, it took me a couple of tries to get it just right, so I want to make sure that I give you guys my best tips to perfect it. Since this is going to be knotted, we are going to make the coil pretty long, and in the end, it was about 38 inches, so be sure to have a large surface area to work on this. I've also seen other versions where it's just a one strand knot, so if you want to create that version, you can go ahead and make this much shorter. Alright, so at this point, I'm pretty happy with how it's looking, so I'm just going to let it sit for about 5 minutes before handling it again, and I find that it's just a lot easier to work with clay when it's not too soft, so leaving it alone for a couple of minutes is going to harden it up. Now I'm taking both ends of my clay and I'm going to join them together and essentially fold our long coil in half. For this next part, I actually put on gloves just in case, but we're going to start creating our knot. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm going to cross the ends over the top of the loop, leaving a couple of inches from the top. And after some trial and error, I found that it was easiest just to flip it over and then feed the end through the hole that our knot has created. So you'll see that I lifted it up and I carefully fed it through without touching the sides of the clay. And this is probably the hardest part of this project. And because we're handling the clay so much in this step, it's easy to deform the perfect coil that we just created, so I tried my absolutely best not to mess anything up. But of course, there's going to be little imperfections, so I smoothed them out as best as I could with my fingers. If you find that you have other marks and fingerprints on your clay, you can actually use some rubbing alcohol to smooth it all out. So I'm using a combination of a cotton swab as well as my fingers to dab the alcohol on top. And this is a great little hack, especially since this piece is going to be pretty hard to sand after baking. It has so many curves, so using rubbing alcohol is really going to help us minimize all the marks. Unlike air dry clay or traditional clay, you can't use water to smooth everything out, so alcohol is going to do just the trick. This was actually my first time trying it out, and I think it worked out so well. I would highly suggest using this technique on any of your polymer clay projects for a really polished look. So everything is nice and smooth now, and the clay has hardened up a little bit, so now is the perfect time to cut the end of the clay with a straight edge. 
From there, I'm just moving it onto my pan and then I'm gonna use a little bit more alcohol to smooth everything out one last time. I put it in the oven for about 20 minutes at 275 degrees Fahrenheit according to the directions. And after it's done baking, I'm just gonna let it sit in the oven to cool down completely. For this last step, I'm just gonna sand it lightly where it needs it, which was mostly on the end, and you can actually choose to paint it or put a glaze on top, but I love the matte finish of the clay, so I'm just gonna leave it as is, and it's ready to go. I really love how this knot came out. I think it's such a fun yet modern and sophisticated piece of decor that you could put on your coffee table or styled on a shelf. You could probably use it as an air plant holder, which I think is super cute. I think this would look great in so many colors to match your decor. And this was just so much fun to recreate. <music> I'm really glad that I was able to try out that project because it's actually been in my bookmarks for quite a while. So thank you guys for suggesting that. As I mentioned in the video, the knot looks so simple, but it's actually pretty difficult to do. So I hope that my little tips and tricks can help you guys because I think it just came out so cute and I can't wait to see your recreations. For the second piece, one of you guys actually DM'd me this little set of mirrors from Urban Outfitters. I thought it was 24 for the three, but it actually is $24 per mirror so each one you can buy separately but i wanted to show you guys how you can recreate it at home for a more affordable option especially since these mirrors are pretty tiny and the one that i made is actually bigger than the one that they're selling so i love that and without blabbing on anymore let's go into the next project <music> For this next mirror, I'm gonna create the hand mirror from Urban Outfitters and I'm using oven baked polymer clay again and I'm just gonna mix a bunch of different brown clays together. I find it easiest to knead the clay first so that it's nice and soft and then I twist them together and kind of wedge the clay onto the table until the color is nice and even. If you're mixing different brands or types of polymer clay, make sure that you read the instructions to see what temperature it bakes at and in general, whatever clay has the lowest baking temperature is what you should go with to avoid burning it. For example, one of the colored clays that I'm mixing in bakes at 230 degrees versus the 275 degrees the rest of them bake at, so later when I put it into the oven, I'm gonna bake it at 230 degrees. The color mixing process takes quite a while if you're mixing in multiple clays like I am, but I basically just use a bunch of different colored clays I had on hand, including oranges, pinks, and browns, which created the perfect color to match the original piece. <music> So now that I'm happy with that, I'm gonna take four popsicle sticks and I'm gonna stack them and tape them together, using them as a guide for how thick I want my clay to be. And this is totally up to you on how thick and how much clay that you need, but I'm basically just gonna roll the clay right on top of it until it reaches the popsicle stick height. And as I'm rolling it, I'm also gonna make sure that it's going to be wide enough to fit our mirror later. If you find that your rolling pin is sticking a little bit too much, you can also add some wax paper right on top and that makes it really smooth. And as always, I'm letting the clay rest for a little bit before I cut into it. So now you'll see that I'm placing the mirror right on top to use as a guide, and I'm basically gonna lightly sketch out my design on top. I actually wanted my hand to be a little bit different than the original, so it's gonna be a little bit skinnier and longer. And for the round mirror, you can find these at your local craft store or even at the dollar store. Now I'm removing my mirror and I'm gonna take a lid or something else that is a circle shape and I'm gonna place that right onto my design. I made sure that the circle is smaller than the mirror so that it could sit right behind it. And for my next step, I'm just gonna cut out my design with my X-Acto knife and I always find it easiest to cut the clay in smaller sections so I'm going pretty slowly for this part. And if you ever find yourself making any mistakes, you can totally just smooth it out later, or you can totally start over and roll out the clay again. For these clay projects, I sometimes have to attempt them a few times before I get it right to show you guys on camera, but it really is all a learning process. All right, so this is looking pretty good now, so I'm just gonna take some of that rubbing alcohol again, and I'm using that to smooth out my edges since they're pretty sharp. I wanted these to be a lot softer and rounder, so the alcohol is really gonna help us get that look. After the alcohol dried down, I just popped it into the oven at 230 degrees for about 15 minutes. And the last thing we need to do is to place this right on top of our mirror and glue it in with some E6000. To ensure that it has a strong bond, I'm going to use some masking tape and let that dry overnight. You could also add some hanging hardware to the back or use command strips and your new mirror is ready to go. 
I'm so glad you guys DM'd me this project idea because honestly, I was a little bit intimidated at first, but I think that it turned out so cute. I'm definitely gonna use the alcohol trick all the time now, and it's been so much fun trying out this technique for the first time. The mirror works perfectly in my space, and you can totally use the same steps to create the other two mirror designs from Urban as well. How cute were both of those projects? I am really proud of how they came out and I want to thank you guys for DMing me some of your ideas. If you have any other project ideas, definitely leave them in the comments down below and also let me know which one was your favorite. So jumping straight into the giveaway, one lucky subscriber will win a $100 gift card to Target. Obviously, I love Target for their home decor, but of course you can use it for whatever you'd like. I will have this open internationally, so if Target doesn't work for you, we'll figure something else out. But basically, all you have to do is be subscribed to this channel, like this page, and also comment down below what is a new DIY project that you would like to learn for this year. I'm honestly really excited to read all of your answers, so be sure to comment down below to enter. If you would like an extra entry, make sure that you check out my Instagram and and like this photo. I will have all the details for the giveaway down below. But again, I just want to thank you guys all for your support and I'm wishing you guys the best of luck in the giveaway. So that's it for me today. Thank you guys all so much for watching and for supporting my channel. Stay inspired and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!